How's it going guys? My name's Wilson as we're already halfway into the 2019 NBA postseason in the semis right now. A lot of all-star players have been very overrated this decade. A couple of them have been eliminated in the first round. One of them's playing in the playoff right now and playing very badly. With that said, here are 10 of the most overrated all-star players of the 2010s decade. Andre Drummond, who occasionally puts up monster numbers from time to time, just finished his 7th season in the league and still shockingly 25 years old. The 6'10 big man made two all-star appearances in 2016 and 2018, put up 17.3 points, over 15 and a half rebounds this season, but very limited offensively, gets most of his buckets on putbacks and offensive rebounds. Although he'll go down as well of the best rebounders in the history of the game, his game's predicated on how focused he is on the defensive end, has questionable work ethic, his 2020 numbers don't translate to wins. The only thing that's improved on his game is his free throw shooting. Shot at around 60% the last two seasons, compared to 38% his first five years. His five-year $127 million max he signed in summer 2016 doesn't do the Pistons justice. Viewed as the franchise cornerstone, Drummond has yet to win a playoff game. Made it twice in 2016 and 2019, swept by LeBron's Cavs and Giannis's Bucks. Still has no perimeter skills despite playing in the weak East. Drummond only had one year where his team finished over 500. Rajan Rondo, who will likely not make the Hall of Fame, was seen as one of the promising point guards in the beginning of this decade, being mentioned with guys like Chris Paul and Steve Nash in the early 2010s after two finals appearances, winning the 2008 title as a 21-year-old starting point guard. He's bounced around as a journeyman, made the All-Star team four times with the Seas from 2010 to 2014. Viewed as a hothead, the 6'1 point guard had his issues with multiple teams, looked at as a veteran leader, his negative attitude held back his full potential, doesn't fit with many players on his teams, will always be considered a bad shooter and a huge distraction with the Mavs in the 2014-15 season. The team was doing well in 2015, looking to make a playoff push, but Rondo's presence made the Mavs worse, was a poor fit, got into a heated argument with head coach Rick Carlisle, disrespectfully left the Mavs after game 2 of the first round against Houston, and ugly the worst, things didn't work out in Sacramento either, despite leading the league in assists in 2016, his team went 33-49 and 49 overall. Spent one season with the Bulls alongside Jimmy Butler and Dwayne Wade. They didn't get along with some of his teammates either. Averaged just 6.7 assists, was a solid useful pickup for the Pelicans. Put up over 8 points 8 assists, showing some glimpses of his former self coming up huge in the first round series against Portland last season, but was very inconsistent with the Lakers. Averaged just 9 points 8 assists on 40% shooting. The 33 year old will probably play a couple more seasons and not be much of a factor. Darren Williams, who was nowhere near the same player as a net compared to being in Utah. In 2013, many people still looked at him as a top 3 point guard, but was far from it. In his disappointing stint with Brooklyn, the injuries combined with his attitude caused the early downfall of his career. Even backups Sean Livingston and Jared Jack ran the team better than him at times. Underrated guards in Goran Dragic and Mike Conley were all arguably better than Brooklyn D. Will. After the 2013 season, Williams never averaged more than 14 and a half points nor 7 assists again, had terrible playoff performances and often disappeared in big games. Russell Westbrook, yes I know he's averaged a triple double for 3 straight seasons, but what good is it if he can't get past the first round without Kevin Durant, even with another star on his team in Paul George, Russ is a terrible outside shooter, stays in the lane grabbing rebounds, his assist doesn't make his teammates better, despite winning MVP in 2017, putting up historic numbers of over 31 points, 10 plus rebounds, 10 plus assists, he mainly won it because he was the second player in history to average a triple double, his triple doubles this past season actually distracted everyone from how bad he was shooting, had the worst percentage in the league in pull-up jumpers, was put in the same conversation amongst the best players in the league just a couple years ago, whether he or Steph Curry was the better point guard, whether he or James Harden was better, and right now, it's not even close, and Kevin Durant's looking more like a genius every day for leaving Russell Westbrook behind. DeMar DeRozan, where the Raptors made the right decision by trading him and snatching Kawhi Leonard. The 6'7 shooting guard continues to prove why he's not a superstar. Averaged a little over 21 points a game with San Antonio his first season, but didn't elevate his game in the playoffs. Losing to Denver in 7 games, scored only 19 points on an awful 7 of 21 shooting in Game 7. The 4-time All-Star is known for his regular season brilliance and constantly lays an egg in the postseason. Constantly proves he's unable to carry the team as the first scoring option. 
season, even leading Toronto to a franchise best 59 wins in 2018. He was badly swept by LeBron's Cavs. James nearly outscored him and Lowry combined, was benched in the fourth quarter of Game 3 against Cleveland, constantly underperforms when it matters most, still not a good three-point shooter. His offense is one-dimensional. The 29-year-old cannot be a number one option for a championship caliber team and doesn't live up to his five-year $139 million contract he signed summer 2016. Dwight Howard, who's been absolutely useless since his departure with the Rockets, will return for the Wizards next season, opting into his player option. Not that he's gonna help the team anyway. After his departure with Orlando, everything fell apart. Combined with his lack of desire and terrible work ethic, his teammates couldn't stand him. After an underwhelming season with the Lakers, the Rockets underachieved with him. They were better after he was gone. The Hawks couldn't stand him, neither can the Hornets. And the Wizards aren't good anyway. Dwight went from an MVP candidate in 2011 to all-star caliber to average to nobody. The fact that he was even compared to Shaq and in the discussions amongst the all-time great centers was absolutely disrespectful to those great big men. Another very overrated big man, Demarcus Cousins, who couldn't catch a break after touring his quad with another non-contact injury in his second career playoff game, will likely never get his max money. Golden State is dominating without him anyway. You can also make the argument his defensive liability makes the Warriors worse. He put up all-star numbers in Sacramento and New Orleans as an incredible talent, but his stats never translate to wins. His Kings team never won more than 33 games, and his six and a half seasons there was basically putting up empty stats. Known for his bad temper and emotions, constantly losing his cool, although he's gotten better with it over the years, the Kings in the Aaron Fox's second season alone had more wins than any of the Cousins Kings teams. Even after being traded to New Orleans, Cousins played 48 games before touring his Achilles in the 2018 season. The team was 27 and 21 with him, but 21 and 13 without him. Nikola Mirotic was a way better fit, despite being way less talented. I won't be shocked if the four-time All-Star never makes another All-Star team. John Wall, who signed one of the most ridiculous contracts in NBA history, which kicks in next season, will likely miss the whole year due to injury. Underachieved with the Wizards, didn't get along with his teammates. After many years of carrying all the hype to be the next superstar, he does have a lot of talent, but still a below average shooter, never even won more than 50 games in any of his first 9 seasons, nor reached the conference finals. Lost to Boston in Game 7 in 2017, struggled going A of 23 from the field in Game 7, the most important game of his career. Banged up by injuries, Walsh played too poorly by his standards, is a 5-time All-Star, was in the conversation with Kyrie and Dame amongst the elite point guards, but is not even close at this point. I'd rather have Kemba Walker any day over the next half decade over John Wall. After he comes back from injury, the 6'4 point guard must change his game a little bit and improve on the shooting if he wants to have a longer career. Carmelo Anthony, who's arguably the most disappointing NBA player the last couple seasons. It would be an absolute travesty if Melo never plays another game in the NBA again after being waived by the Rockets. We all know he was one of the most elite scorers of his generation, with career averages of 24 points a game. The 10-time All-Star only made it past the first round twice in his career, only won one total playoff series this whole decade, lost in the first round four times, and failed to make the postseason four total times in the 2010s era. Besides being a scorer, he doesn't make his teammates better, was an awful fit with OKC, not good on defense, not a good leader, constantly played for teams that carried a lot of hype going into the season, only to be disappointed at the end of the season, never changed his game as he got older, he's fallen as fast as anybody had in the last couple years. Despite being on some bad Nick teams, the fact that he missed the postseason four straight times in the weak Eastern Conference after 2013, while viewed as a superstar or an all-star, is inexcusable. There's way too many liabilities in his game for any team to take a chance on him. The end of Carmelo Anthony's career is not looking good. Kyle Lowry, who's been an absolute joke in the 2019 playoffs, constantly comes up short time and time again. The fact that he's a 5-time All-Star, 1 more than Damian Lillard, 5 more than Mike Conley, is absolutely insane. That's how weak the East is, and he gets a lot of the benefit of the calls by constantly flopping, which is the most effective part of his game. Every year the Raptors comes up short in the playoffs because Lowry doesn't perform at an All-Star level. The fact that some so-called experts on various media outlets thought that he was better than Kyrie Irving a couple years ago just shows how dumb some of those people are. I won't be surprised if his struggles will be the desire factor why Kawhi Leonard leaves Toronto in free agency. Scoring zero points in the first game against Orlando was embarrassing enough. Had more single digit games than 20 plus point games in the 8 games he's played these playoffs. 
always plays his worst in the postseason as we've seen time and time again. In my opinion, he's not a top 10 point guard in the NBA and his disappointments in the postseason shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody. The aging 33 year old will be paid over 33 million next season. Those were the 10 most overrated all-stars in the NBA this decade. In my opinion, Kyle Lowry is the most overrated one. Who do you guys think is the most overrated NBA All-Star in the 2010s era? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I talk NBA comparisons, amazing storylines, NBA history, and anything basketball that will interest you. If you love the NBA, subscribe for more content, more great stuff coming soon. I love all of you. See you next time.